Hi there, this is Bob from TurboWeb and I'm going to very quickly show you what uh, CSS source maps are and how they can be useful for you when you're developing uh, using SAS for style sheets. Um, now in this example I'm going to use Foundation and Compass uh, which you don't need to worry too much about what they are, all you need to know is that Foundation is a CSS framework and Compass is a set of tools that uh, include SAS on the inside. Um, so uh, I'm using them because I can very quickly get a demo site up and running and we can inspect it. Um, so I'm going to make that site now in Foundation. So I'm going to make a new Foundation project called Foundation. Okay, and I'm going to start up my browser. And go to browse to that URL that I just created. Okay. So what we see here is we see the default markup that Foundation creates for a page, um, but as you can see there's no styling. The reason for that is that, um, well if we, if we view the source for this, you'll see that uh, there is a reference to a style sheet here, but it doesn't exist. Um, so we just need to use Compass to uh, create this. Compass compile. Okay, and the default settings are appropriate to generate that. So now we have ourselves the same markup, but it's now using the standard um, foundation CSS. Uh, now one of the, th the, uh, one of the things that um, you can do here now with this uh, with a source map is that if you inspect the element, and this works in Chrome as well as Firefox, and also Internet Explorer, although I haven't done it in that, um, you'll see um, down the side here in the tools, you can find where the rules are coming from uh, for all, all of the elements that are on the page. Um, so if we click on this here, uh, you'll see here's the standard the standard CSS. Um, by default, <coughs> Compass will inject uh, comments in the CSS to tell you where you can find the original reference for this. Um, but we can actually go one step further by using the map files to resolve this automatically. Um, how this works is uh, in the case of Compass, we need to tell Compass specifically to generate the map files. Um, so Compass is, uh, is driven by the uh, config.rb file, um, and you can read up about all the settings and stuff um, for it, but the key thing that I want to add here is just a, a line that says source map equals true. Okay. Um, now, previously when I compiled this, you'll see that the directory was style sheets and it wrote this one file here. If I now compile it again, you'll see that it's detected that the config.rb has changed. So it's cleaned the style sheets directory and it's recreated the app.css, but it's also created an app.css.map. Um, now, I found that I need to restart my browser for it to pick up the map file, so I'll just do that now. and load that back up again. So we'll see the same thing. Um, however, now if we inspect an element, okay, on the left hand side we get our rules, etc. Um, but you'll see now that this has changed to reference a SCSS file instead of CSS. Now, this is strange because a browser doesn't know how to deal with an SCSS file. Um, so if we right click on that though, you can see that there's this tick option on here called show original sources. Um, and you can use that to toggle between the actual CSS reference and the SCSS reference and this is resolved by using that map file. Um, so out of interest if we um, go into the style sheets directory here and we have a look at our app.css, um, here's the file that we were looking at in the browser before. Um, if we have a look at the app.css.map file, okay, what we see here is we see um, it looks like it's JSON and we get a whole bunch of stuff. So it's basically a, um, a heap of references to the rules and then where they can be found in those actual files um, and then the files that uh, are involved with the CSS itself. Um, now your browser knows how to take care of that, you don't need to worry about generating that at all but it's just interesting to um, open it up and see how it works. Okay, um, right so an actual practical advantage of this is that uh, when you are editing, if I just put a watch on this, compass watch, okay, and that hasn't worked, why, oh, I'm in the wrong directory, compass watch, okay, compass is watching for changes, right, so if we are now working on, um, if we're now working on our CSS, so if I go into 
uh, where does it hang out? Uh, SCSS, right? And I start editing the um, app.css file, which is just the default foundation one. But I put a, I put some, I decide that I want to import my own stuff as well. So import Bob. Okay, and I'm going to make a Bob.css file. Uh, import files um, start with an underscore prefix, otherwise they get compiled to their own CSS file. And in here I'm going to say um, uh, my class is a font font size um, 10 ems, color red. I really like big red text. Okay, and back in the index.html, I'm going to find some stuff, and I'm going to go class equals my my class, is that what I called it? My class, right. So, because um, I've had this watching um, here, um, it's actually created the app.css when the file was changed and it's gener generated the map file as well. So if I hit Control F5, uh, now we get our big text. It's not read probably because foundation is getting in the way, but if I inspect this, we should see on the right hand side that the reason that it's large is because so we're looking for the my class and here it is here um, so we can see that uh, the red didn't apply because it was overridden by um, the color further out was more specific but more specifically it's resolving to the underscore bob file so it's a very quick way of getting back to the original original place without that you'll be looking at this and going, ah, oh, now the app.css, uh, what's in that? In this case, we're lucky that it's not minified. If it's minified, it's all on one line. The map file kicks in even when the file is minified. So that's how that works. I hope you found this useful, and um, if you've got any questions, you can let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.